Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be installing the SmartCore Pro flooring. It's a vinyl flooring that looks just like wood. It's really, really nice stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how to install this. Super easy. It snaps together with very few tools at all. So I'm going to show you guys how to prep the floor, how to lay it down and install it and finish it off. Alright guys, before I get started, don't forget to hit that like button down below, comment and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Now before I can lay down the floor, I need to prep it and I need to clean this up. We have just finished off the sheetrock spackling, painting, and now we're ready to move on to the floor and finish it off. So there's lots of sheetrock dust, some crumbs of sheetrock and spackle stuck to the floor and some paint as well. So I'm going to try to clean that off as best as I can. I'm quickly going to sweep. Then I need to take a spackle trowel. I'm going to scrape off any spackle that has been left over from the previous job and scrape that off level with the floor. Now I'm going to try to get it as smooth as I possibly can. I know this flooring has a foam base on it so it's pretty forgiving if there's a small lump. It will go right over top without showing but I want to make sure it's perfectly level before I start. Now we've already swept the floor, scraped all the spackle off, and any clumps that were on the floor have now been cleaned up. I'm just going to be extra safe and just wipe down the floor with a wet rag. This will absorb any dust that's on there and I can make sure that all the spackles cleaned off of the wood before I start laying the flooring down. Now I know this has a rubber backing on it so it's not supposed to slide at all, but that dust could cause some trouble and make it easier to slide around. So I'm going to clean all that up, make sure it's all good to go. And and then I can start laying the flooring. So here's the SmartCore Pro flooring that we're gonna be installing. This is a vinyl flooring, artificial wood that looks just like real wood. And it's supposed to be really durable, even commercial grade durability. Easy install, it says it's an easy DIY project and strong no matter how cold or hot it gets in the summer and winter. We purchased this flooring from Lowe's. They have a ton of different options to choose from. So I'll leave the link down in the description below if you guys are interested. But I'm really interested to see how this works going together, if it's really that easy and how well this holds up and what it looks like when it's all finished. Now one thing to keep in mind before you just start laying the flooring, it's recommended that you mix up the packs of flooring that you purchase. If they are from different batches, the coloring can change slightly. So you wanna mix that in randomly so that you won't have any odd transitions from one color to the other. So I'm just gonna take all of these and combine them into one stack that I can pull from to lay down the flooring. Now you might want to think about where these boards are going to end up. If you start with a full board on one side of the room, will it end up with just a one inch sliver of a board on the other side? It might look odd. So I'm actually going to plan to have a full board in front of the shower base that we just installed before we can lay down the flooring. And the other side of the room, most of it's going to be covered up by the vanity we're going to be building. So I'm not too worried about that side. The doorway will end with just enough space. It doesn't look awkward. So we're going to go with the full sheet right in front of the shower. So I need to measure back from that into the cubby where the toilet is and work backwards before I get to the shower and make sure I line that up perfectly. Now I'm gonna make my first cut of this flooring and I'm just using a utility knife. You wanna use a nice sharp blade and just score through the board and now you can easily break that in half. And all the vinyl plastic on top underneath the wood texture breaks nice and smoothly, then it's just the foam underneath. And if you bend it back and forth a little bit, you can easily tear that off and have a nice clean cut. Now, in order to make a perfectly square cut without even having to think about it really, you can use one of these speed squares like I have and hold that down on top of the board and just run your blade right along that and you'll get a perfectly straight cut every single time.
like I mentioned before, I'm starting in the corner where the toilet's going in this little cubby and I need to cut the flooring to fit around the flange perfectly. I don't want to leave too large of gaps. Even though the toilet's covering it up, I want to try to get it pretty close. So I'm going to use this tool that allows me to trace the exact outline of this flange and I can transfer this now to the board on top. To cut a curve like this on the flooring, I would not recommend using a utility knife. It works great for straight edges, but not for curves. So I'm gonna be using a jigsaw to speed up that process and make it a lot easier. Now the blade I'm using on this is just a regular wood blade. You could use a metal blade. Either way, it's gonna cut through the vinyl really easily, so there's not much worry about what type of blade you use. Now, it does make a mess using the jigsaw, so we're gonna have to sweep this up before we can lay the flooring down and make sure everything's clean. Next, we're gonna be adding in the board that will span from this cubby. I need to notch out for this post that's coming out here, and then it will go back up to the shower, leaving the full board width in front of the shower. It's gonna look really nice. If you need to make any minor adjustments, the utility knife works great for this. You can easily whittle down this material with a nice sharp blade and get it just perfect. It is recommended that you leave at least a quarter to eighth of an inch in between the flooring and the wall. This allows the flooring to expand when it gets hot and contract when it gets cold and not leave cracks along the edges. This doesn't look good now, leaving a gap like that. You can tell it just doesn't look finished, but keep in mind, we are gonna be installing baseboard molding around the outside of the room and a quarter round molding in front of the shower and around the vanity to box it all in and finish it off. Now I have one more cut to make with the jigsaw and then this piece should be pretty much ready to put in. And then from there, that's the most complicated section done and I can just start building out the floor a lot quicker. Now that fits perfectly. We're gonna quickly sweep underneath this all the shavings that I've created and the sawdust from the jigsaw needs to be cleaned up before we can lay this board down. Now I'm also gonna be shaving off the tongue that's facing the shower. That way it's a nice smooth transition from the flooring to the shower. There's no gap from the tongue and that will give me enough space for the eighth of an inch of expansion and contraction of the flooring.
Now that all the planning's done, we measured everything out. It works perfectly, has this full sheet across the shower, and that's the first straight line that we have in the room. We can easily build off of that now and go a lot quicker. Now if your room is already square, has a straight line to start, it's a lot easier than having to figure out where the first board's gonna go and notch it just perfectly. But we've got this perfect, and now we can build off of it. Now we're getting on to more complicated joints. Now that the cutting is more simple, we have double joints. Trying to get the short edge as well as the long edge to snap in together at the same time is a little more tricky. You can try to snap in the short edge first and then go for the long one. But I like to snap in the long edge, slide it down as far as it can to the joints butt up together and just lightly hammer that with a rubber mallet as well as pushing together and it will snap them in place. Now it's really helpful to have a rubber mallet at this stage as well as a two x four or scrap piece of wood that you can hammer on and tighten all the joints together as you're working. Now again, I'll join the long edge before I join the short one, and once I have that snapped into place, I can pull the two short edges together until they're touching, and then I can use my hammer and lightly snap that together. And you can actually hear a difference in sound as you hammer, it will snap into place, almost like how when you zip a Ziploc bag together, you can hear it snap and click into place. That's basically what this is doing. It locks together really well. Now you don't want to hammer on this too hard or else you can break off that tongue and groove locking feature. Now you just want to hammer lightly as you're pushing pressure together and it will snap them both into place. Now another tip, as you're starting a row, you want to throw in different lengths to randomize where the joints are going to be. Now we have already two joints in the same row that you can see there. We're going to randomize that a little bit better as we go across the room to where we're starting with different sections at the beginning and that will throw all the joints off in different random sections. So you want to keep that in mind. It looks much more natural when all the joints are falling in different places and it even strengthens up the floor. You don't want all the joints in the same place or else it will cause weak spots. Now someone woke up from their nap and was really curious about all the noise that was going on. I do you got this looks do so I have to pretty. finish? No. Now I'm just going to basically fly through this. It's just repeating the same steps. I have a few complicated cuts towards the end when I get up against the wall and I have a few holes I need to drill out for the drain and the supply lines for the vanity. But other than that, basically all the same simple steps and it's a really easy floor to install. And it looks great too. I cannot believe how nice this flooring looks. It looks just like wood and it's actually comfier to walk on than wood. It doesn't make a sound. There's no creaking or any noise at all when you walk across it. And because of the cushion that's attached underneath each of these boards, it just makes it a lot comfier to walk on and has a little bit of a cushion to it as you walk across. Now we're pretty close to the finish line. We have one more full set of flooring to go across here and then probably a two or three inch strip up against the wall. Now this whole wall is going to be covered up by a vanity. I'm not too worried about the thin strip going up here. Nobody will ever see it and it will look just fine.
This last row will need to have a few holes drilled out for the drain and the supply lines. And for this, you can easily just use a drill. I'm using a Forstner bit if you have a hole saw or just a really large drill bit, it will work just fine for this. Now again, this makes a huge mess with shavings everywhere, so you want to make sure you sweep everything really good before laying down the floor because that will really mess up the end result of the floor. There'll be lumps and uneven sections on the floor if you leave all the shavings under there. Now there goes the last piece. We're all finished installing the Smart Core Pro flooring. And that only took us a couple hours to prep the floor, get everything ready, and to lay it down. Now I'm gonna go around the room, adding in the baseboard, finishing off the floor even more. Now in order to achieve the full waterproof effect of the flooring, you need to add a strip of silicone underneath the molding around the border of the floor. Now, if you don't do this, it will not be waterproof. Water can actually leak underneath the molding in between the flooring and the molding and cause a lot of damage. If you have a room that's constantly gonna get wet, like a bathroom where the shower is, you're stepping in and out of the shower, you need this to be waterproof. So make sure you add that silicone bead underneath the molding and then you don't have to worry about it. Now I'm just gonna take some regular white caulk and fill in any of the gaps in the moldings, make it look a ton better, and also fill in all of the nail holes so it's a nice smooth surface ready for paint. So that just about finishes up this process. We're gonna add some paint on these moldings. You guys don't need to see that part. We're just gonna finish all of this up. I'm gonna add a quarter round molding along the base of the shower to seal up that section, add some silicone underneath that, and then add a quarter round molding around the vanity at the base to finish that off and cover up any gaps in between the vanity and the flooring and make it look really nice. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this helpful. 
this really is such an easy process once you get the first couple steps down you can go across the whole floor no problem so i would recommend this to anybody we're really impressed with the flooring it looks great it feels like really good quality and i mean it looks just like real wood but it feels better it has a little bit of a cushion it's completely quiet no creaks in the floor which is really good and we have all the moldings around the edges finishing it off completely makes it look really nice All right guys, if you've watched the video this far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have not already and hit that like button down below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.